Hi, this is Luan Stanel. Uh, I uh, just graduated in my French university in is about geography and history. I will make videos in French, English and other languages. This time I will make a special video about history. If you have seen a lot of things about Saudi Arabia recently or in the past, maybe you should know that uh, this big country in the Middle East has strange origins. The first Saudi state was created in the middle of the 18th century by Ibn Abd al-Wahhab who was a founder of the doctrine later known with the name of Wahhabism. The first Saudi state was created with Ibn Abd al-Wahhab and with the House of Saud. This first Saudi state wanted to establish in Arabia and through the Muslim world a purified Islam. It started the application of, of severe sanctions like stoning, ban on music, cutting the hands of the thieves, conquering the region of Najd and then expanding their influence over the eastern coast from Kuwait down to the northern borders of Oman. Saud's forces went so far as to gain command of the Shia holy city of Karbala in 1801 which was part of the Ottoman Empire. Here they destroyed the tombs of the Prophet Muhammad's nephew Hussein and other important monuments they sacked and killed around uh, 5,000 civilians. In 1803, the Saudis sent out forces to bring the region of Hejaz under their rule. Taif was the first city to be captured, and later the two holy cities of Mecca and Medina. This was seen as a major challenge to the authority of the Ottoman Empire, which has exercised its rule over the holy city since 1517. The prestige of the Sultan was damaged. In his shoulders was the responsibility to protect the holy cities, to ensure the continuity and security of trade and the pilgrimage, which were stopped. For the Ottomans, the Saudis were heretics, but the Sultan was already engaged against Russia in a war and had his hands tied. That is why he couldn't react and retake the holy cities and the region of Hejaz, which is today's uh, western part of Saudi Arabia. From 1807 to 1811, he was pressing very much his ally fight in Arabia. This ally was Muhammad Ali. He got over Egypt in 1803 up to 1805. Gradually, he took the power from the Mamluks and the Ottomans after the, the chaos which was left since the French army uh, lost Egypt. Muhammad Ali was a very smart man, a genius, he didn't want to devote himself to this very, very important campaign because he had worries in Egypt with the Mamluks and with the consolidation of the power and reformation of the Egyptian army. The Ottoman Sultan Mahmud II, he wanted to get rid of the Wahhabis of the Saudis and at the same time he he wanted to get rid of Muhammad Ali's forces by wasting his army in the Arabian Peninsula, which at the same time would allow the Ottoman Empire to regain power in Egypt. But Muhammad Ali had already made his calculation. Egypt, however, did not have at the time a military industry before. Therefore, the Viceroy, a self-made king, decides to create in Alexandria and in Cairo some of the necessary manufacturers. The army of Muhammad Ali was largely based on Albanians, brave but difficult to control. In early October 1811, 8,000 soldiers, of which 6,000 Albanian infantrymen, were sent to Arabia under Tusun Pasha. Muhammad Ali's second son, at the age of barely 18 years old, became the commander-in-chief of this army. Tusun was the favorite son for Muhammad Ali as he had many good qualities. Elegant, thin, always smiling and popular with the army and the people. He was so generous that even Muhammad Ali was criticizing him at times. According to the Lebanese Maronite writer Gabriel al Kiri in his book Ibrahim Pasha, he used to reply, Father, it's good that you don't like spending money as you were not born son of a viceroy, but me, the son of Mehmet Ali, I must keep my rank and show myself generous. After having seized without difficulty the port of Yambo, they need to pass the difficult mountains. 
A heavy defeat was waiting them outside of the city of Medina. Muhammad Ali had to send immediately strong reinforcements to support his son. But he still didn't suffer a lot from this failure. After two weeks of siege, they take Medina and Mecca in December 1813. Too soon, the task of liberation for the Egyptian Ottoman army, the liberation of the holy cities. A great joy for the Egyptian soldiers and the whole Ottoman Empire and the whole Muslim world. A very sad day for the Saudis who had to retreat in the Arabian deserts and then go to Najd. In 1813, Thasos Island in uh, northern Greece was granted by the Turkish Sultan to Egypt. The young Mehmet Ali was born there, was born in Kavala, but raised by a family in the village on Thanos. A few months after uh, the liberation of Mecca and Medina, a new army would be sent with Muhammad Ali itself as its leader. He, he entered the holy cities with many people gathered to celebrate his arrival. He used to gain the support of the local tribes by skillful diplomacy. In 1815, the Viceroy takes the, the city of Taraba. In January, 30,000 Saudis armed are waiting for him in the mountains. There was a difference as his troops were half the Saudis, but they were much better prepared and they had artillery fire. The strategic planning proved to be fatal for Abdullah because he left the mountains where he was protected and went to the plains where Muhammad Ali was waiting for him. And this was a massacre. His army was completely powerless in this part of the West Saudi Arabia. But the war was not over. He returns in Egypt a day after the Napoleonic forces fall in Waterloo. A terrible situation for Muhammad Ali will come this year. Terrible death of his beloved son too soon apparently from a sickness at the age of almost 23 years old everyone was afraid to tell the news to the pasha and they decided to put the body close to the doors of his palace he saw his son tomorrow in the morning he cried and was very unhappy for many days, he decided to not see anyone, refusing to occupy of the public affairs and political ones. September 1816, Ibrahim, 27 years old, prepares to give battle to the Saudis. He had to pass 800 kilometers to go to the capital of the Saudis. It had to pass the desert, which was a natural defense for the Saudis with many hostile tribes. This was a costly war which deprived Egypt of many resources. He had French officers this time with him which proved to be helpful in this war. He was taking city by city, village by village, but the violence of Ibrahim was sometimes terrible. He killed all the prisoners in Mawye and did the same thing at Hanaike. Having the support of the Bedouins, Ibrahim became the master of the desert. Abdullah with his army doing a guerrilla warfare against Ibrahim. His technique was fear and respect. Not everything was bad under Ibrahim. He organized the region organized the local leaders and controlled the local populations to not be attacked by Bedouins and other groups. Ibrahim continued to advance like he did with the towns of Unaiza and Buraida. Joined now by most of the principal tribes, he appeared in April 1818 after a long uh, way from the Hejaz. When he arrived at the heart of Nejd, Abdullah bin Saud was unable to prevent the recapture of the region. Finally, Ibrahim reached the Saudi capital, placed it under siege for several months until it surrendered in, in the winter of 1818. 
the Egyptian army entered Diria and penetrated the defenses, totally destroyed the houses and cut down every tree in the palm groves. The Egyptians were estimated to have lost around 10,000 men in this siege and the Saudi forces around 2,000. Ibrahim then, after the sack, shipped off many members of the clan of Al Saud and his leader Abdullah bin Saud to Egypt and then to the Ottoman capital Istanbul. Abdullah and his followers were publicly beheaded for their crimes against holy cities and mosques. Prior to his execution, Abdullah bin Saud, a Wahhabi who forbade to listen to mu music, was forced to listen to the loot by the Turkish soldiers. After he got executed, his head was thrown in the, water, in the waters of the Bosphorus, marking the end of what was known as the First Saudi State. However, both the Wahhabi sect and the remaining members of the Al Saud clan stayed committed to found a second Saudi state, which happened in 1824. But it was very difficult, as the, the army of Muhammad Ali would not allow them to be important again, not at least until his, his army was destroyed by the great powers in 1840. Saudi Arabia continues to rule over the Hejaz region and over the whole of Saudi Arabia. 200 years after the first Saudi state was destroyed. So that's all for this time. Don't forget to subscribe and uh, about the great powers destroying Egypt and Egypt trying to conquer the Ottoman Empire. That's another story which we will discuss in another video.